As we mentioned, after more than two and a half years since being named special counsel, John Durham has now released his final report. The 300-page report says the FBI acted too hastily when it opened its investigation into Russian interference in the election and that it was based on, quote, raw, uncorroborated information. Remember, Durham was appointed special counsel by then Attorney General Bill Barr to investigate the FBI's probe into Russian interference in the 2016 election, as well as to look into special counsel Mueller's investigation of Trump. Now, over the course of this investigation, Durham indicted three individuals, securing one guilty plea resulting in probation and two acquittals. Joining me now is Justice and Intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian, who's been digging into this report. So, Ken, what's in this thing and what are we learning? It's an exhaustive look at what uh, the investigation codenamed Crossfire Hurricane. And there are a lot of different uh, rabbit trails that this report goes down. But I think fundamentally uh, what it does is it suggests that the FBI should not have opened this investigation in the first place. And that, as you said, it did so too hastily uh, based on uncorroborated information and that um, basically the FBI was suckered by a bunch of people with political agendas. Now, the problem with this thesis is that it runs directly contradictory to another independent report by the Justice Department's inspector general back in 2019, which took an exhaustive look and found that, in fact, uh, there was proper predication for this investigation, that the FBI acted appropriately in opening it and also found no evidence, no demonstrable evidence of political bias in doing it. Now, obviously, one of the agents involved, a man named Peter Strzok, was found later through text to have expressed, you know, animus towards Donald Trump. He was not a Donald Trump fan, but he was not the only decision maker here. There were others. Um, and look, there's a lot of different aspects to this report. I mean, one of the cases that Durham tries to make is that information about potential counterintelligence threats involving the Clinton campaign was treated differently. But what he doesn't address is the context was so different. Mm -hmm. Here you had Donald Trump, who was publicly asking the Russians to find 30,000 missing emails from Hillary Clinton's ser server, who was expressing admiration for Putin. That was the context that Durham really doesn't address in his report. Um, look, the other thing is there have been a lot of policy changes because there were some serious flaws in how the FBI approached, particularly its applications for foreign surveillance warrants, and the rules have been entirely overhauled in that respect. There's also a new rule that says the attorney general has to approve any investigation into a political candidate or political campaign, and a lot of people would say that makes perfect sense given the stakes here. Um, ultimately, this investigation, as, you, as everyone knows, did not find formal coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia, but it found a series of troubling contacts and a Senate uh, Intelligence Committee report bipartisan went even further and said that those contacts posed a counterintelligence threat to the United States because the Trump campaign essentially opened their arms to help from the Russians. Gary. Ken, I mean, obviously this is going to get a ton of attention, especially on the right. I'm looking at my Truth Social app now. Donald Trump has just posted. He says the American people, the American public was scammed. Um, he's going to be driving a lot of attention towards this. How do you think the DOJ is going to react to this report and to that attention? Do you think they're going to try to come up with more reforms than the ones you were just talking about, even to just try to assure people, especially those who might be skeptical based on this, that, that, they, that they hear what they're saying, that they've taken this report seriously? Like, what happens now? You're raising a very good point. The DOJ is very concerned about this reaction on the right. They don't want half the country to believe, as, as many millions of Americans do, that the FBI was out to get one particular side of the aisle, in this case, Donald Trump. And, and that's why uh, Chris Ray, the FBI director, issued a statement essentially distancing himself from some of the decisions made uh, in this investigation and saying, look, that was then, this is now, we've made a host of changes. Some of these mistakes would not happen again. And this Justice Department uh, feels similarly. They want to divorce the, 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 these institutions from politics, and they want the whole country to believe that it's on the level, um, but they're just dealing in a climate of misinformation. The thing, you no, know, Trump will, will will proclaim that this report vindicates him, but it actually does oh, yeah. the opposite because he says that this was all corrupt. John Durham went looking for corruption. He looked hard for corruption. He interviewed every CIA analyst who had their hands on this, and every FBI official, and he found none. He couldn't establish, and he was over two in court. What he found was essentially a difference of opinion about the strength of this case. Ken, I imagine in the two-hour version of this show, we would probably talk more about the special counselization of the Justice Department that's grown out of this, where everything gets farmed out. But alas, we're only doing the one-hour show today, so we got to leave it there. Thank you for your reporting and your time digging into that report, Ken.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.